Look at this. Giving up are the Tacoma Stars as the Dallas win their first game of the season. <laughs> Knocking off Tacoma Stars. And you've got to love this for these fans and these Dallas Sidekicks fans out there. And the franchise. The franchise. Sidekicks just... win. Sidekicks win. No. Sidekicks <laughs> win, baby. They are now 1-18-3. <laughs> I've never been so excited for one win in a season in professional sports my entire life. <laughs> I will tell you, I cannot be happier for this team. Happy Monday, everyone. This is MASL Monday. Alex Bastiavansky here bringing you all the best from the Major Arena Soccer League. Welcome to everyone listening on Sirius XM FC Channel 157 and watching on MASL TV on both YouTube and Twitch. And I am joined by my fellow follically challenged brother today, the one, the only producer, Phil Mr. Levon, I, I had a last name. His trip to Queens this weekend. Yeah. And uh, yeah. We'll, uh, maybe we'll get into that later on in the show, discuss some of the interesting stuff that went down in his hometown. But today, Phil, first of all, welcome, buddy. How are things? How I'm calling you? my own number this week. I'm calling my own number. We've got playoff implications out the earlobes. I'm just, there's too much to sort of decipher. Couldn't trust anyone with this sort of information. Plus, his timing would have it. I go on vacation on Wednesday. So, you know, I'm just going to mail it in, do some shows, call it a day. Phil, as you mentioned, there was just a ton of stuff that went down this past weekend. And we're into our last week of regular season play now. The stakes could not be higher. First of all, we're going to start off with the Dallas sidekicks. Yes, the Dallas sidekicks. Why, you may ask, last place in the West. It's because the sidekicks picked up their first win of this season, one eighteen and three for the poor guys in green. Who realistically feel there's been many times this season where they've they've deserved a win. They haven't been able to get it, but they get it uh, in the return match. First, they lose to Tacoma twelve three on Friday, but on Sunday uh, they pick up the five three victory over the Stars. And this was not a throwaway game for Tacoma. Tacoma had absolutely everything to play for. They are fighting for their playoff lives. They dropped this one. First, let's talk about good for Dallas to pick up this yeah. win. And you heard how much it meant to Eddie and uh, and Matt Thornton when they actually yeah. got the W. They, they could not have been happier. Well, first off, I want to say that see, Dallas has been close all season, yes. right? One goal game here, one goal game there, leading Tacoma earlier in the year, giving up all sorts of goals. No Jamie Lovegrove. No Blas Perez, right? Tacoma, as you said, everything to play for, fighting for their playoff lives, and Dallas puts in a performance, right? They get the victory. Um, as you said, right, it was elation the whole time. They held on strong at the end, which they haven't been able to do all season to get their first win. But for Tacoma, man, this is the side I want to talk about, right? Because everything was kind of falling in line for Tacoma, and now They've lost this game. They've thrown a giant monkey wrench into the Western Conference standings, the qualification into the playoffs. But I'll sit here and argue, too, that that loss lost Nick Pereira, the MVP. Interesting. Yeah. You, you think because if they get in, they're backing their way, their way into the playoffs now. And there was a lot of people who questioned, he's leading the league, lead, uh, pardon me, leading the league in scoring but there yeah. were, yeah, people who were saying that they thought there were more deserving people out there. So you're saying that this loss, you feel, eliminates the chance of Nick winning the most valuable player award? Well, yeah. I think when you look at just points, obviously, you have to go deeper than just the point value, yeah. right? Six attacker goals, strength of schedule, et cetera, et cetera, right? But you cannot have, a, in my opinion, right? I'll, I'll sit here and say, in my opinion, you cannot have your MVP of the league carrying his team all we've said all year is how this is nick Pereira's team and everyone else kind of follows through right you cannot have your mvp of the league barely squeak into the playoffs like it just can't happen you can't conceptually with any sort of intelligence be like that's the mvp of this league whose team who backdoored their way into the playoffs after a weekend and now if he goes out yeah the question is how how much can you expect one man to do um, that, that's the counterpoint to that. 
Um, the, the, Nick is the, the number one scorer in the league, the number one scorer on Tacoma, and the difference between him and second place on the team in scoring is by far the largest of any team in the league from first to second. He is trying to do it all himself from a scoring perspective. Sorry, guys. But I mean, I, I know everyone's, you know, trying to pull their weight on Tacoma, but from a full, full-on production uh, point of view, it is Nick Pereira. It has been Nick Pereira mm-hmm. all season long. So you can only expect someone to do that much. He did have two of their three points in, in the game. He had a goal and assist. They scored three goals. Um, that would be my counterpoint. I'm not saying he should or should not get it, but that would be my counterpoint to saying, um, you know, your, your biggest players have got to step up at the biggest times. Um, but uh, anyway, I totally get your yeah. point of what you're saying. Well, we'll see. We'll see what happens coming what this happens. week, right? They've got a tough schedule coming up. But, I mean, I'm, I'm going to sit here and, and I'm going to put my name on it and say just – with the way that the schedule is sort of breaking and the way everything we're going to finish for Tacoma, I think I think this loss against Dallas, while an amazing victory for Dallas, and I'm very happy for everybody associated with the organization, I do think this other side of it, I think it cost Pereira the MVP. And if you're Tacoma, that is leaving three massive points on the board. Yeah. They would have virtually clinched it for them. Uh, they would have been in a much better spot going into this weekend. For everyone, we are going to flash the standings in a little bit and show everyone where we're what we're talking about, and where we're standing. Let's their, their last two games, Tacoma <laughs> against San Diego and Empire. I mean, it is going to be a tough road for them to hoe to try to get in. We'll talk about that more in a moment. Monterey, Monterey. Oh man, two games, yeah. two losses. They now sit in sixth in the West on the outside looking in on the playoff picture. Uh, 9-6 in Chihuahua. They beat Chihuahua the week before. They know they can take them. They did not get it done. And then dropping a heartbreaker to San Diego. 3-2 on Sunday. Man, the flash. uh, Your take on their weekend, Phil. So we talked about Nick Pereira's MVP weekend. Check out Boris Pardo's save to seal that victory for the Sockers. At the 30 seconds left, scramble in front, header in front, and Boris sort of goes full out to make that save. One of the best saves of the year. I think if we want to do the MVP with Pereira stuff, we have to sort of include that moment for Boris as his sort of narrative highlight reel moment. Well, but also in it- San Diego that Craig Elston will always yeah. push, and I completely agree with him. The problem is they're buried on a team that just has so many right. all-stars, Boris right. Pardo and Craig Charles. But that point, right, that point that Monterey sort of would have won, lost, whatever, right, the three points that San Diego got, that opens the door now for Tacomas and your Mesquites of the world, right? That would have that would have put those two teams in a world of hurt. Monterey now in sixth spot, you know. Yeah. Um, and it should be mentioned, of course, that their last two games are against Dallas. So on the right. surface, people might say, well, they've got the easiest route out of everyone. Counterpoint, as I like to do, Dallas wants to play spoiler. Yes. As we saw against the Coma, Dallas absolutely would love nothing more than to spoil Monterey's season, uh, kill their playoff hopes, pick up at least one win on the final weekend. They are going to be jacked for those two games. Now, if if Love Grove doesn't play and Blas Perez doesn't play, that sort of changes the equation a little bit for Monterey and Dallas and obviously Monterey is the favorite to take all six points to sort of get into the playoffs based on the schedule that's remaining but yeah like this isn't a slam dunk no games here are slam dunks this weekend which is what makes it so fascinating right and you know my takeaway from from Monterey's weekend is you know they're a tier below San Diego and and Chihuahua um, but the, the, their, you know, the playoff lives are in their hands. Um, all they have to do is take care of business this weekend. And I definitely, I definitely, the biggest takeaway from that San Diego Monterey game is they sort of, I mean, that save, that literal save, muddied the entire playoff picture heading into this weekend. And the West Division is as clear as mud. Uh, yep. Absolutely. When we look at the standings, you'll understand what we're talking about. Just a reminder, you're listening to MASL Monday on Sirius XM FC Channel 157. Uh, you can hear us every Monday, uh, 10 p.m. Eastern Time, 7 p.m. Pacific. And you're watching on MASL TV on YouTube and on Twitch. And a reminder that you can watch all MASL games live in the archive 
on Twitch, which you are going to want to do as we get into the final weekend of play now. And uh, joining me today is Phil Levanco, producer Phil, the producer of the show and of MASL Under Review, which you've got to check out on YouTube. All the uh, all the controversial plays from the previous week, and uh, they break it down as to whether or not it was the right call that was made on some uh, very uh, close decisions. So be sure to mm-hmm. check that out as well. Phil, Baltimore, Mesquite. Yeah. Uh, two teams going in two very different directions right now. Mesquite. Just uh, dropping harder than my grades in college. I don't know how to, what I could come up with there, but and <laughs> they have just. Uh, I'll tell you. I'll tell you the direct comp. Four in a row they've lost, man. Six to seven. Uh, I'll tell you the direct comp. It's from last season. You don't have to look very far. The Zombie Fury, the Empire Strikers. Empire did same year. sort of. You yeah. know, we, there's a direct line there. It feels very similar. Yep. To what yeah. happened last season? It's there's no question there's a parallel there. It was 3 2 on Friday in Mesquite, Baltimore, taking it, and then just an utter slaughter on Sunday in the fortress that is Sakey Arena. 6 0 for the blast. Um, just showcasing once again how difficult Baltimore will be on their home floor in the playoffs. But you see the parallel between Mesquite and Empire, but just take us through, like in your mind, we got Craig Elson's take on it last week, but. What is your take on Mesquite and what is going on with the Outlaws right now? Okay, I think David Ortiz said it best on goals and boards last week. They're hurt, right? They got a lot of players missing, and it's really time for Mesquite to put up or shut up, right? Like, you know, Luis Morales coming back from his absence because, you know, we don't really know if he was hurt or, or anything like that. Seven points in seven games since his return. Only two points in his last four games. They need their players to step up. I mean, this is put up or shut up time, right? We, we heard from, from David. We know about the injuries on the team, but it, and it's not an excuse anymore. They were the darlings of the league early in the season, playing San Diego to the wire in San Diego, beating San Diego at home. They're one in seven since they beat San Diego in Mesquite. It's put up or shut up time for this team. It is in the, I loved it. I mean, it was their first season back since 2019, 20, the COVID shortened season. And uh, yeah, it's such a great story. It's difficult to watch them. Their last two games of the season, man, they got Chihuahua and empire. Um, so I mean, two really, really tough games against two of the top teams in the Western conference. It is going to be tough to get points in those two. Uh, yeah. Let's uh, switch to the East for a moment here. St. Louis and Milwaukee on Sunday. Milwaukee takes it 5-4. The ambush eliminated from the postseason picture. Uh, you know, a lot of stuff had to break their way, Phil, over the last week and a bit. It didn't happen. You know, kudos to them for the great overtime win last weekend. Um, they had a chance, but it wasn't looking probable. And Milwaukee ends it once and for all. But great game in, in uh, Milwaukee. 5,000 nearly on hand. Great crowd as they get ready it ramped up for the playoffs great crowd my takeaway from that game is milwaukee held their nerve at the end of the game right we've seen all season milwaukee get out to a big lead and sort of the other team chip away chip away come back come back yeah. sometimes they win sometimes they've lost that game so milwaukee held their nerve finally right in a big game i mean baltimore are are have to fire to their feet a little bit for that home home field advantage, right? I mean, it's it's going to be close. It's going to come down to last weekend, theme of the show, right? So, I mean, good win, good win in Milwaukee. They have a tricky week coming up, which I'm sure we'll talk about later. Only other thing I want to talk about in terms of St. Louis, you know, I, Will SK is on fire, man. Will SK, who was on MASL Insider with Philly last week. He's got seven goals in his last five games. He's scored an absolute banger um, this weekend. I mean, carrying the team is is an understatement. Uh, I'm so impressed with the way he plays. It's unfortunate that we won't get to see Will SK in the playoffs. It is. Uh, St. Louis just uh, couldn't get it going consistently enough this yeah. season, unfortunately for them. So they do get eliminated. But uh, Ian Bennett with a hat trick, by the way. And uh, my nominees, we'll talk later, for uh, goal of the week as well. Let's talk about Empire and San Diego, bud. Because yeah. another instant classic. These teams, every I mean, the, the, the previous week was intense. Uh, this one was a 5-4 San Diego overtime win. 
It was a cleaner game than the week before, just a single blue card. Uh, we right. thought a war was going to break out uh, on the, at Pechanga the, the, on the previous Sunday in that game. Man, it was intense. This one, still intense, not as dirty, but uh, great game nonetheless. What are your thoughts on it? So soccer's have taken five of six this year from Empire, right? But every game has been super close, especially recently. We mentioned it last week a little bit too with Craig. There's the blueprint, right? Empire has the blueprint on how to take down the soccer's. Be physical, be strong, get in their face, get in their head, most importantly, which they are currently living rent-free in San Diego's head. Let they put in pressure on the referees to make sure the referees manage the game, right? So it's an, it's it's they have the blueprint, they know what they want to be against the soccers. And last two losses were overtime losses, right? To to San Diego. So they're close, right? And I got to be honest with you, San Diego does not want to see Empire in the playoffs, especially no, in the first round. No. You know? Do you feel like the Strikers, even though even though they've lost six of seven, of course, they were the team that uh, that ended San Diego's 30-game unbeaten regulation sure. time win streak, uh, which no. definitely put a burr in the Strikers' saddle, in the, yep. pardon me, soccer saddle, so to speak. Um, they don't forget that. Uh, they have a great rivalry, SoCal rivalry, those two teams. But is Empire, they've got that one win. Are yeah. they starting to figure the soccers out? And can they figure them out uh, in enough time come, come playoffs? Let's put it that way. Here's your, here's your bulletin board quote. Here's your bulletin board take from me. The one team the soccers do not want to see in the playoffs, the one team that can take down the soccers is the Empire Strikers. And that includes playing in Chihuahua. Probably includes the Chihuahua, the environment. You're, you're includes saying, Monterey. You think the Strikers yep. are the number one nemesis for the Soccers yes. in the playoffs? You heard yep. it here first, folks. Producer Phil with the hot take. Okay, man. Um, just a reminder, you're listening to MASL Monday on Sirius XM Channel 157. You're watching on MASL TV on YouTube and on Twitch, and you can watch all MASL games live and archived on Twitch and listen to MASL Monday uh, every Monday, 10 p.m. Eastern Time, 7 p.m. Pacific on Sirius XM FC. Let's take a look at the standings then. And for those of you listening on Sirius XM, we're going to vocalize this for you. Um, okay, taking a look at, let's do the West first because the West okay. is where it's really, really cloudy. San Diego went first. They have clinched first place in the West. Supporter Shield for the MASL. Uh, second season in a row. Second is Chihuahua. They have clinched a spot. So those are the only two teams that have clinched a spot in the West right now. That is how crazy it is for the final weekend. Empire most likely is going to clinch. Where it gets really crazy is the 4-5-6. Uh, to Coleman, Mesquite, tied with 33 points each. And uh, Monterey now sitting after that brutal weekend where they lost both their games. Um, against tough teams, it's got to be mentioned. I'm not trying to knock Monterey. It was it was a tough weekend, but they lost both their games. 32 points, a single point behind. Of course, the key is you want to get into that fifth spot. That could get you into the playoff game. Single game playoff for all the, all the marbles with the fourth place team. So you've got to make it into at least fifth spot. And right now, Monterey is on the outside looking in, in sixth spot. Phil, here's the question. Take us through... Okay. As quickly as we can, uh, Pete Richmeyer from the MASL League office and the Tacoma Stars was nice enough to send us an email with the scenarios. How quickly can go we can we go through these scenarios? We've got about uh, ten minutes left in the show. So All right, I'm going to try. Quick, so I'm going to stop talking. I'm going to try. Scenarios. Okay. Okay. So third place is Empire. They're on 37 points. They play Tacoma and then Mesquite, right? So they just need one point, right? They need an, a win, an overtime win, which is two points, or an overtime loss, which is a point, single point, sort of gets them into the playoffs. Now we get, Mark, I'm going to the Monterey side first, right? They played Dallas twice, right? They beat Dallas twice. That's six points. They're on 38. That's a great position for Monterey to be in. Mesquite play a road game in Chihuahua, and then that home, that final day against Empire. Oh, boy, right? And then Tacoma... Right, they play 
Empire on Thursday and then San Diego. So these two teams are basically going to be scored wa scoreboard watching the entire time. All I'm going to say, right, because there's way too many uh, scenarios, Tacoma has a tiebreaker, right? So if they they land level on points, Tacoma has a tiebreaker over Mesquite. So my prediction, I think we're going to see Monterey jump into that fourth spot. I think T Tacoma is going to slip in to that play-in game, and I think, unfortunately, for the Outlaws, they'll be the odd team looking out. Right, okay. Let's take a look at the East. And by the way, another point we got to bring up is we don't know who's going to sit, for example, for San Diego, who's clinched already. Point. That's going to play yep. a big part. We'll get to that in a second. Let's quickly look at the East because it's not as crazy as the West. Milwaukee in first. Baltimore could overtake them in the final weekend. Uh, it's just a one-point spread between those two teams. Milwaukee 42, Baltimore 41. Uh, Florida in third spot with 35. Utica in fourth with 33. Kansas City right now in fifth. So those teams have all qualified for the postseason. The big question is what will be the standing and who's going to end up right. with home field advantage, Phil? So the most interesting thing for me is that away trip to San Diego for Milwaukee, right? We've seen them sort of rest players along the way. They've talked about how injured they are. Tom uh, Wynn on our show talked about managing minutes and managing health of players so wouldn't be shocked to see a a lessened side in san diego put all their eggs in that basket away in harrisburg on the final day of the season to sort of clinch that number one spot another fascinating game baltimore utica right utica needs that to host the play-in game if they win they host the play-in game right. if they win in overtime i think that's two points kansas city would have the tiebreaker. Regulation wins. Kansas City would have so, the tiebreaker. Right. Yeah, okay. so Kansas City, if they win in regulation, would have um, the tiebreaker over Utica. So that's a little fascinating there. And Kansas City, Kansas City just got win, baby. Al Davis, just win, baby. My brain's on overload from all the different scenarios. that it's could too much. Go down, especially in the last man. I mean, it's, it's too much. much. Okay. I mean, that's how so, we lost all our hair, is trying I, to I, figure I, this out. I, I, I'm, good, I'm cool being bald, man. I, I, it left, it's gone. I'm cool being bald, you know? It just is. The Rock's bald. It works for him. Statham's bald. It works for him. Are you going to have to shave it anymore, or is it just like, Yes. Yeah. See, I do Yes, too. skull I shaver. Have, I electric. Skull I shaver. I have the whole crown thing going on. Yeah. I, mm -hmm. I I started baking it years ago, and once I started doing that, the ra the, the, the electric uh, razor has no effect anymore. Once you start... Once you start baking it, that's it. You can't stop. That's it, right? All so right. I haven't started. I'm I'm still on the skull shaver. You're on the skull shaver. Okay, let's just talk about uh, sort of my big game of the week. I'll do one and you do one, and we'll yeah. quickly run through here. And I'm actually taking the one that that you briefly touched on. There was Milwaukee in, uh, in San Diego. It's a first seed versus a first seed. At least Milwaukee's going into the week as the first seed in the East. Fascinated on that side, but is this going to be a stud or a dud this game, Phil? Because as you mentioned, we don't know who's getting sat. We don't know. Yeah. Milwaukee's been uh, doing this throughout the season as well. Load management, so to speak, where they sit stars. Uh, are they just going to sort of rest people and load up for the Harrisburg game, which is really the big game that matters the most to make sure they get those three points? And also San Diego. Is San Diego going to be sitting all their guys? Because this game means absolutely nothing to them aside for bragging rights. They can meet again in the playoffs, right? Yeah, I, I, I mentioned it a little bit before. I don't think Milwaukee's bringing a full squad. You know, I have no sources. I haven't called anyone or anything like that. I just can't see how they bring a full squad right. to San Diego. Right. It's not happening. So it's, I mean, we were, we, we looked at this earlier on in the season. We're like, ooh, that's going to be a juicy matchup. But we don't know. It could be a dud because San Diego could sit a lot of guys as well. As Craig Elston mentioned last weekend, it's probably the smartest thing for them to do. Your yeah. big game, uh, we've got about, uh, what, four minutes here left, Phil. So take us through your big game that you're really looking forward to seeing this well, week. Well, I, I mean, it's got to be Tacoma at Empire, right? Those Thursday games from this week, I mean, set the multi-twitch on, watch all of the games, consume everything, because a lot of the playoff picture, while muddy now, we'll start to see some evidence on what, on how everything is going to settle on Thursday. So that Tacoma, that Empire game on Thursday at the Toyota Arena, I mean, you got to, 
you got to dive headfirst into the mud, right? That's that's where the car crash is. That's where the rubbernecking is. That's where you want to be. On top of that, I will be in attendance. I'm expecting Philly and the doc to roll out the red carpet for my daughter and me. And I mean a literal red carpet. I, Wait, I want on, a bleeping on. red carpet. Is it a red carpet or a purple carpet? It's all purple now. I want the red one. No, no, no. It's a, red, red it's a great one. question, uh, it's but I want the red one. It's a question, man. It's, they've gone from I know it's a good purple. one. Everything is purple from the tuxes yeah. to the suits to the sh uniforms. So you're going to have to talk to them about that because red might be banned yeah. from that arena now. It's all purple, it's, baby. Fair, it's a very fair point. Okay, we'll figure that out later on. Um, okay, so your prediction, Phil, on how the West plays out, and 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 I think you answered this already. You think yeah. it's going to be Mesquite that's on the outside looking in at the end of the day? Yeah, producer Phil jumped the rundown a little bit, right? You'd think I'd be, have more discipline than that. Um, no, I think it's Mesquite going to be the outside looking in. I don't see them sort of recovering from this slide that they're in, right? So I see Tacoma while... I mean, I think both teams, I wouldn't be shocked if, if if both teams get an everything bagel this weekend, right? Or this coming up week. But I, I think Tacoma is going to backdoor their way in and sort of play Monterey, who will get the four seed okay. um, and host that play-in game in the West. Okay. Uh, let's wrap things up then with a uh, goal of the week and moment of the week. Phil, give us your goal. Edgar Gonzalez's 26th goal of the season in Chihuahua, a little bit of a side volley banger. Um, one of the most spectacular goals of the season. I haven't done my goal of the year yet. It's certainly up there. It's probably my favorite so far this year, but I haven't I haven't done the, the leg work yet. I haven't I haven't ruminated on what's the, the uh, very similar to the Dominic Francis scissor kick a couple of weeks ago as well that made my goal of the week, um, which was absolutely beautiful. I'm going to take, it's tough to beat that one uh, to be different. I'll take the Ian Bennett goal against St. Louis uh, off the Marcio Lette shot. And you've got to really watch it in slow motion to appreciate it, but shot out front and uh, it, to the naked eye, when you first see, it might not catch it, but Ian pivots sort of in mid flight and gets the back heel on it to deflect the ball home. Um, it was an absolutely gorgeous goal by Mr. Bennett. And uh, your moments of the week, what are you taking, Phil? As a proud member of the Goalkeeper Union, Mike Zierhofer's shutout at home against Mesquite. You have to be loud and proud in the Goalkeeper Union. Shout out for my boy, Mike. As a former goalie myself, I've got to agree with you. And that huge save by Boris Pardo, amazing as well, to uh, hold, the, uh, hold the line against... Uh, Monterey, and you know what? For my moment, I'm, I'm, man, I'm gonna go with the Dallas win. I'm gonna go with the Dallas win, their first win of the season against a team that came in to their home arena was hungry, was desperate for points. So it's not like they were facing another last place team in Harrisburg or something. No, Tacoma had everything to play for in this game. Dallas gets their first win of the season. They will not go. Uh, it will not be a winless season for them. And not just the win, but I love listening to Matt Thornton and Eddie P after the win. I think it was Eddie who said, I've never had a win. Uh, something along the lines of, I've never had a win that's meant more to me. I, like in, in this kind of a situation as well, it's, it's the only win we've had all season. We're not going to make the playoffs, obviously. But just it meant so much to the organization, to the team pick up that win. Hopefully they can build on it for next season and listen, get some momentum for the big weekend that's ahead to play the role of spoiler, of course, as well uh, when Monterey faces them. So listen, man, uh, we are just about out of time, producer Phil. So uh, have a fantastic time. Please do not go off the top turnbuckle um, at wrestling. No promises. But no promises there. No promises. Have a great <laughs> time. Have a great time. Yeah. With Billy and the doctor uh, out there in uh, in Ontario for the game. Say hi to the boys. And mm -hmm. uh, it's going to be a good little we'll FaceTime you. It's going to be a good we'll weekend FaceTime for you. you. Yeah, for sure. It's going to be a lot of fun. I'm looking forward to it. I, As timing would have it, it's the last week of the season. But, you know, WrestleMania calls, you answer the phone. Absolutely, buddy. Have a safe trip. Have fun. And uh, thank you, everyone, to for listening. <laughs> to MASL Monday. We will see you again next Monday, 10 p.m. Eastern, 7 p.m. Pacific. Take care, everyone. And there was a hard-fought, 
digging their, their, their heels in. 5-3 win. I couldn't be more proud yeah. to be associated with this franchise right now. Yeah, they, they just, they never gave up. They never quit.